Hi guys, um, here we are back again at the Admiral Graf Spee. Um, I'm in the process of adding uh, lots and lots of detail to the uh, hull and superstructure. Um, I'm working at the railings right now and I thought I'd just give you a bit of an impression what I'm doing. Um, it seems that uh, many, many models actually are um, uh, finished for the contest already. Uh, there are a few like me that will need the week to finish the kit and uh, probably you get an idea uh, why this is so when you look at what I'm doing. All right. Um, I hope that you will catch some of the drift that's going on when you look at the work actually I'm doing. I hope this will show on the video. Um, okay. So I hope this will give you a bit of an impression. Um, I will be moving around the camera a bit uh, back and forth to show you um, what the deal is. Um, okay. So I'll be adding um, railing. Um, having a look at the um, at the details here, you can hopefully see that some railings have been added, some ladders have been added. Very small part, uh, very intense um, to uh, work with because all these parts spin so easily. Um, now, while I'm locating um, the proper parts, I'll be giving you a bit of a break. I'll be back in a sec. All right, I have located the part. This is part number 31. Now I'm taking my Optivisor lenses on because everything I'll do, I'll need the Optivisor lenses for. Otherwise, I will not be able to see what I'm doing. I hope that you can get what's going on. Uh, this is part 31. Uh, thankfully, in the Edward kit, all parts are nicely numbered. And... Uh, the first thing I do is I take this uh, razor blade uh, type of blade and I cut the individual stubs on each railing part. And as you can see, the parts are already pre-painted. I always do that because I rather paint now and touch up. This is not a uh, a must do uh, you can if you feel more comfortable painting your railings when they're attached that is okay with me I'd rather paint them now and touch them up all right this is the length of the railing and this is pretty much the maximum length I'm using if they are straight but um, this part needs to be shaped um, to conform to the model it will have to go on wait a minute wait for it here is coming it's have will it'll have to conform here it will be on the top layer and you can see this is nicely pre-shaped so the length uh, are individually uh, fit um, what I'll be doing is I'll cut this thing apart to make it fit. First of all, I can see on the railing there are several smaller connector points left. So first measure is to clean them off with a Tamiya photo etch file. This is a very very nice tool. I can only recommend this to everyone working with photo etch getting this this is really nice i don't know if this is really showing on the video at all but i tell you i can see the difference and that is what matters right now in ship modeling you will frequently see the judges in contests 
walk around with magnifying lenses to see if these things are cleaned up and it'll make a difference in the tour of judgment if those things are still uh, with the stops or without and as well of course uh, the railing will fit much better if free of these okay so what I'll be doing you see this is quite a complex shape here straight curve straight again bent again very difficult so better cut it apart and uh, I'll be doing this right here taking my blade again cutting this part into two parts you can see now I've got a starting point and an end point it's gonna fit right here Okay, sorry if the hand obstructs your view now, but I gotta try this. Okay, I can see the railing is a little bit too long, it's not gonna fit in there quite properly. So that'll have to be remedied. This is, um, I will be shortening the railing by cutting the step away just a little yeah and then removing the end pieces on the railing part of course I would uh, it would uh, be nice to have fitting railings for every section but uh, that doesn't usually work out so this is what we have to do all the time if we're proper ship modelers. Um, because these things should really fit nicely. Now I can see that the railing is still a little bit too long. So I again take the cutter knife and shorten the railing. Actually, it's. You rather have these a little sh too short. Then a little too long uh, of course with time you learn to get these in the proper length uh, when you have the small parts like these uh, you will have to reattach it to the to the railing and uh, now probably you notice that ship modeling breeds a very special type of nutcase like me otherwise you wouldn't be able to really really handle that and here is your railing at a proper length all right you can see it now taking this carefully toothpick gel type of super glue on here sticky right into place beautiful okay very nice so as so you cannot will not see any type of uh, shadow or anything it's uh, you take a soft brush um, should be pointed and you take a little bit of white glue it's one of my favorite uh, things to work with and then I trace the lower part of the railing as to connect the lowest rail to the deck completely cover up any wood paint that is showing underneath while this is drying, this will be touched up with uh, gray color as well. Now um, I'm turning my attention to the uh, curved part here. This is nice to have the brush around. You can always remove 
smaller specks of dust and something like that. If you do it right away, then you'll have a much nicer um, model in the end. Uh, because, you know, these tend to accumulate over time. Okay, now there is a part that needs to be curved. To do that, uh, you need a just a uh, stiff, um, just a hard surface. Um, I remove the model for a bit. Usually I'm taking this aside, but it's going to be difficult to to maneuver the camera around all the time. So this is what I'm doing. Just uh, removing the glass plate here just a little bit. Uh, this is just a regular cutting mat. Yeah, you know, the ones, yeah, type of plastic thing. It's hard, but not really all that pressure resistant. Not like, um, not like a, a piece of glass I'm usually modeling on. Now I take this, uh, this is a micro file, yeah, it has the, has a nice di diameter and uh, what I do now is just I roll over the part of the railing right here and I increase the pressure until this part is really rolling up to my liking. Of course, color paint peels off uh, while I'm doing this. Yes, cannot be avoided, but it can be touched up. All right. Um, now I'm. I have to frequently um, repeat this process, and dry fit to see if the curve works nicely for me. This is already almost perfect. I can already see that the that the um, the length of the railing is too long, so um, I can say goodbye to a little bit of it to make it easier to to handle. Um, cut cut a bit back here, just to shorten it. Not too short right now because we want to maneuver it into place and then really make it fit nicely. Again, hoping my hand will not obstruct the, the view on what I'm really doing here. Okay, I can see this should be quite nice. Yeah, it should be a little bit more. Okay, I can see now from fitting this, the lower part of the railing will be going around this band of the deck right here so there is another Tamiya tool that comes in handy this is uh, this plier I love it yeah it is really really nice and straight gives you a very good grip and control and I'm um, taking this to bend the railing away like that Oops, I'm sorry I'm leaving the the lens all the time while working and well still too long now oh, that's crazy okay it's still too long so this makes things more easy for me I just go take side cutter and just cut all the last bits and pieces away okay then take the plier again pick up the part and maneuver it into place and be careful not to destroy anything adjacent and watch where your hand is going okay this looks pretty good. 